Hi everyone, so we're now going to continue discussing the um, trend in ionization energy and if you remember in the previous video I talked about you know just defining the term ionization energy and talking about um, exactly what we um, observe when we go from removing one electron then second electron and third electron and fourth electron from aluminum specifically and we discussed that the different energies really correspond to the removal of these different electrons and as a result there are energy value differences uh, when we take out you know one electron versus an another because um, there is um, differences in terms of what kind of orbital the electron is located in and what kind of uh, shell the electron is located in as well as what atomic number um, you know relatively speaking the um, species has at that particular uh, you know for the removal of that particular electron and again that really goes back to the idea that when you want to anal analyze these trends um, you always want to look back at this equation for the binding energy of the electron which is how strongly is the electron for any electron really to be held by the nucleus so when you're analyzing whether you're removing a 3p electron versus a 3s electron you want to think about well what is the um, effect on z effective for a p versus an s orbital okay and where is the principal quantum number at that particular what is the value of the principal quantum number and so always think about these three factors that i mentioned here plus we'll talk also about shielding uh, when analyzing the trends okay all right so we're actually going to actually look at the trend now in ionization energy and you can see that this is a graph for actual values of ionization energy and they are being provided in terms of um, the mass here the mass of the elements and then the period that they're in okay so you can see that um, the top one here if you, if you if you see all of the top points here for each period right so these are all the different period um, uh, in the periodic table for period one is right here is only two elements right which is hydrogen and helium and then period two is basically this one right here this this particular plot right here period three is this plot right here P period four is this plot right here period five is this plot and then period six is this uh, plot right here okay and what you notice here of course is that generally speaking as you go from uh, the left of the period to the right of the period like let's uh, let's analyze period two for example overall you see a uh, an increase in the ionization energy because this is your y-axis is your axis for the energy itself you notice that in general if i were to kind of draw this this seems like there's an increasing trend uh... when we go from left to right in that same period same thing here uh... there's an increase in period three period four same thing there's an increase increase and increase now um, I don't want to gloss this over because clearly there's some um, important exceptions here that you notice also if you're paying attention and you notice that there's for example uh, an exception where instead of a beryllium uh, increasing uh, you know uh, ionization energy when it goes to boron actually decreases but then afterwards it goes up again following the trend but then N for nitrogen to go to oxygen again instead of an increasing trend actually goes down so we want to actually spend some time talking about those exception but generally speaking uh, the trend is um, up from left to right in a period okay and that's what I mean when I talk about earlier in the previous video that the trend itself would explain you know the majority huge majority I'd say 90% of all the elements but then there are certain exceptions and those exceptions have to be explained now, if you're talking about a group, a group would be something like the noble gas group, for example, right? Now, if you look at the noble gas group in general, as you go from helium to neon to argon to krypton, which is the way this is how it's arranged in a periodic table, you can see here that, you know, you go down this way, you notice that um, the value of the ionization energy decreases, right? So in a group, the value of the ionization energy decreases. Uh, you can compare also the group 1a uh, elements here and you notice that in general there is also a decreasing trend right this is not as pronounced as the uh, 
as the noble gases but you can see that in general if I were to draw a line it would have you know it'd be a downward sloping line like this and obviously that means that the ionization energy is decreasing uh, uh, as we go from lithium to cesium and remember that those are all my uh, group 1a elements lithium sodium potassium rubidium and cesium um, and also you can take a look at any other uh, group there you can take a look at uh, the uh, group 2a which is beryllium magnesium uh, and so on and you see again a, a sort of a, a lowering or a decrease okay so in general then you can make this um, you can make this statement about the trend in ionization energy and you notice that this is your periodic table here when you go from left to right you see an increase in ionization energy and vice versa when you go from bottom to top earlier we we're talking about top to bottom but now we're talking about bottom to top when we're when going from bottom to top in a group we also see an increase in ionization energy so overall you see an increase this way and you see an increase that way okay the question then that we have to explain is why we see that particular pattern okay and it's really again not necessarily that difficult to explain if you understand the meaning of this binding energy equation and you start to analyze what's going on in a period uh, that affects the z effective and the n and what's going on in a group that's affecting z effective and n so if we look at um, the trend ionization energy as we go from top to bottom okay as we go from top to bottom in the periodic table we know several things happen first off when you go from top to bottom the mass of the um, elements get heavier and of course the mass comes from proton and neutron so really the reason for the increase in mass is because the number of protons increases in other words the z the atomic number increases right okay so that's important another thing that happens of course when you go from this to that to that to that is the period increases right and remember the period corresponds to the value of the principal quantum number so in other words your n increases okay your n value increases now when n increases remember what happens what that means is you have one n then you have another n around it right you can think about it in the Bohr model you have one n and then you have another n that's bigger you have another n that's bigger and remember when we talk about um, energy of orbitals we talked about this concept called shielding which is the fact that the core electrons tend to shield the valence electrons so if your valence electron is located at the third shell the electrons in the second and the first shells are going to shield the attractive interaction between the nucleus with that third shell electron so the larger your n is the more shielding is going to to happen so shielding increases as a result of increase in n now we have to go back to this equation and think about what happens when both of these things happen which is z goes up now if z goes up atomic number goes up that means the z effective goes up if the z effective goes up that means this equation of course becomes more negative right more negative mean more stable remember think about that so always keep that in mind however that increase is counteracted by the increase in two things n which is the principal quantum number so remember if this goes up this is a denominator if this number goes up that means that the whole increase due to the z effective is also it's kind of canceled out right by the increase in n not to mention the fact that the shielding also increases and remember shielding affects z effect uh, the, the you know the z effective right the more shielding you have the smaller the z effective would be and in fact we actually made a calculation of z effective if you remember from the topic on the energy of the uh, orbitals uh, and the value is never equal to the z itself right because of shielding so if you take all of these discussion that we had in context what we see is the following we see an increase in z we see an increase in n which result in increase in shielding as a result of this overall the z effective stays probably about the same maybe drop a little bit the n on the other hand increases okay so if the n increases and z effective stays about the same 
what you find is as you go to larger and larger value of n, which is as you go from top of the group to bottom of the group, this energy value becomes less and less negative or more and more positive. When the energy becomes more and more positive, what that means is the electron becomes less and less stable. Remember, right? Because higher energy means less stable. Okay, so that's really important to, to understand. If the electron is less stable, that means it takes less energy to remove it or to ionize it. And so we would predict as a result when we go from top to bottom the ionization energy should go down which is exactly of course what we observe in the trend we see that the ionization energy goes down when it goes from top to bottom or it goes up when we go from bottom to top okay and that's exactly what we observe in this trend earlier there's a decrease in ionization energy as you go from the top of the group to the bottom of the group what about across a period when you go from left to right well again you have to analyze the uh, consequence of moving from left to right in a period the same way as you analyze the top to bottom uh, movement when you go from left to right remember you're staying in the same period so that means your principal quantum number your n value stays constant you don't change the n okay so as far as this equation is concerned this is the same however what is changing as you go from left to right of course what's changing is the actual value of number of protons the z the atomic number changes it goes bigger and bigger and bigger right you can see it here in a periodic table you have three four five six seven and so on so the atomic number gets bigger if you again combine these two observations okay in mind z increases n stays the same so shielding is about the same because n is about the same Overall, what you'll find is that the binding energy should become more negative. Why more negative? Because this number stays the same, this number gets bigger because the z gets bigger and the shielding stays about the same. If, become, if the, this number becomes more negative as you go from left to right, that means that these electrons are more stable because they're more negative remember more negative means a more stable electron lower in energy so these electrons are more stable than these electrons right here from on the left side if they're more stable electrons on the right side that means it will take me more energy it will require me more energy in order to remove the electrons from these elements in comparison to the electrons from these elements so then I would predict that the ionization energy would increase as I go from left to right and of course that's what we observe when we go from left to right uh, which is remember that in within a period let's say from lithium to neon we see a general increase in ionization energy when we go from sodium to argon we see a general increase as well okay so in other words we're able then to explain um, what's going on in both cases from top to bottom as well as from left to right and we'll talk a little bit in the next video then about the actual effects of orbital type which of course has to do with orbital penetration in other words if you're comparing the stability of an electron in a p orbital versus an s orbital um, that's when we're gonna see some exceptions okay so this effects becomes more pronounced when we go from left to right along a period and we'll discuss that in the next video but I hope at this point you get an idea of what type of reasoning uh, analysis you have to do when discussing trend. You really have to go through talking about the Z, the N, the shielding, and then rationalizing why you see a certain uh, type of trend uh, being observed either uh, and 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 making that rationalization based on the value of the binding energy of the electron.